I just built the tiniest home assistant dashboard ever. Why would one need a teeny tiny motion sensing battery powered touchscreen home assistant dashboard? Well, let me show you how we use it and stick around to the end to learn how to make your very own bento box. Shara and I live full time in our DIY Sprinter van and we use plenty of water washing dishes, taking showers and filling up our water bottles. We have six electronic ball valves controlled by automations. One of those valves changes this outdoor shower outlet into a city water fill inlet. There are also smart valves to manage the flow of water between our two freshwater tanks, as well as empty our gray tank. If you want to know more about how we made our plumbing system smart and how we automatically manage two fresh tanks, check out my plumbing video linked below. Long story short, while most of our water system is automated, there are multiple tanks and valves to monitor while we fill up our fresh water or empty our gray. I used to cancel the navigation and extract my phone and use Home Assistant to do all of this. Well, not anymore. Now I just grab Bento off its charging base and head to the fill port and plop it on the side of the van. Magnets. The built-in IMU detects when Bento has been turned upright and changes the display to our water fill page. It sets the brightness to 100% and it prevents the screen from sleeping. If the device stays upright for several seconds, then the fill select valve is automatically open. This is the valve that turns the outdoor shower port into a city water fill port. Now we're all set to monitor and fill our water tanks right here at the fill port. No phone required and no switches or buttons. Did someone say no switches? Well, I don't see any switches anywhere in your van. Well, if you live the no switches lifestyle and you want everyone to know it, or you just love a beautifully embroidered hat, you too can own this lovely piece of headgear. I highly recommend the trucker rope hat, but there are other styles available as well. If you want in on the no switches lifestyle, check out the product link down below. Thanks to Smarty Van member Matt for the nudge to make merch. Your hat is on me. Speaking of members, all Smarty Van members can find a discount code for merch in the post tab on the main channel page. All right, let's get back to work. So all we've done is grab Bento and plunk it to the side of the van and the valves are set automatically ready to fill. We usually fill both tanks and this switch indicates the valve that allows the water to flow from our primary tank down to the auxiliary. Once the water is flowing, tank level data comes over Wi-Fi from Home Assistant and the gauges on this display will update. We're also using the RGB LEDs on the side of the device to indicate fill level. If you want to be really cheeky, you can even have Jarvis announce water levels as the tanks fill. 10 gallons. When the auxiliary tank is full, that valve closes and now the primary tank will begin to fill. We usually fill to 36 gallons, so our automation will close the fill select valve to stop the flow of city water, and the lights on Bento will begin to flash to let us know we're full. If you need to empty the gray tank, you simply grab the device and flip it around. It's like a valve. The display rotates, and a few seconds later, the gray tank will open and start draining. Turning the device back upright will close the gray valve. I'm pretty proud of that one. When you're finished filling, just plop the device back on the magnetic charging base and the LEDs go back to showing the water fill level and an overview page is displayed with gauges for water, gray, battery, and diesel. The screen dims after a few seconds, then the display times out. If Bento isn't receiving a charge for a period of time, it will go into a deep sleep to preserve the battery life. I'm also using the three capacitive touch buttons to change the screen brightness and change pages. If you want to make a tiny dashboard like this one, you're going to need a couple of things. I'm using an M5 Stack Core 2 version 1.1, but the Core 3 is out now as well. The M5 Stack Core 2 comes with an internal battery and an IMU, but I wanted to create a magnetic charging dock. So I swapped the back of the Core 2 with an M5 Go battery bottom tube. This includes a 500 milliamp battery, an IMU, magnets and pogo pins that allow you to connect to a magnetic charging base. And how cool is this? It's even compatible with Lego. M5 Stack has a whole ecosystem for Internet of Things. Its cores and accessories all stacked together. I had a Core 2 lying around, so I went that route. But if you like orange, you could also opt for the M5 Stack Fire Development Kit, which has all of these parts already included. Or even the M5 Stack M5 Go IoT Starter Kit version 2.7, which comes with a bunch of other fun sensors and accessories. 
Just keep in mind, my ESP home configuration is built specifically for the M5 stack core too. If you go with the M5 Go or Fire, some code tweaks might be necessary. To set up the charging base, I've tapped into the 12 volt charge port in the Sprinter, and now we have a permanently installed charging base. There are links to all of these M5 stack devices and their documentation down below. The device is being programmed with ESP Home, and I'm integrating it into our Home Assistant server using the native API. But you don't have to use Home Assistant. You could use the ESP Home MQTT integration to communicate with any home automation platform or server. For the display, I'm using the LVGL graphics library, which makes creating gauges, switches, and other UI elements really straightforward. There's a little bit of a learning curve, and I'm still getting the hang of it, but it's way easier to use than the native of graphics library built into ESP Home. I'll link to the ESP Home LVGL documentation below. I'm also providing a link to my full ESP Home configuration down in the description below. Top tier smart event members make this possible. Say thanks to these folks for supporting the channel directly. If you want to become a supporting member, click the join button down below or like and subscribe. It's free and it helps out the channel a ton. You could also grab a no switches hat. All right, until next time, safe travels.